I got some more parts for this uh, 90 yesterday. Now again, I did order from Britpop because there was a simple reason I didn't get them from Bellmark. Was I need to put replace these bolts at the back that go on the, the uh, rear suspension shackles through, through these things, you see. One of the problems is when you buy commercial, I had to buy them in a pack of 10. I don't need 10, I only want two. So Britpart sells them in twos, but the Britpart ones are made in the UK. These made in India. Now, to tell you the honest truth, even if you get a sort of good quality one, they don't really last all that long anyway, so you might as well just get a I'm fitting one. some uh, aftermarket gas shocks. These were the ones that were originally fitted to this uh, Defender 90. But I just wanted to show you, the, some people get confused about the order in which these um, washers go. And you can see they've got a, you know, the machine, they've got a, what is it, concave, con, con, convex, I don't know which is, can't remember, it's too early. Um, but the rounded bit goes to the inside, so you put your roundy bit on, your bush, your other bush, then your other roundy bit goes inside. So that means when the shock moves, it's not on this flat bit here, it's got something to rub against. Now, I know that these are old style because uh, some are um, you know, like a solid bush in there, you know, like with a pin in, and they seize up, but these are quite easy to get out. Now, one word of warning, you might have noticed something. Different sizes. This one goes on the inside, this one goes on the outside. So we put this one on, and I always put plenty of anti-seize on anything now. Anything that moves I anti-seize it. Sure, um, these are a bit rusty, but oh, I don't know. can't change everything. But they were a bugger to get off. I must admit they were an absolute nightmare to get off, even I've put them on wherever. And put a new nut on, and spin it down. Now I've changed those brackets for some good used ones because when we took it off, our old friends who, who built this before had put um, inch size bolts on metric threads. Not good. Now the other thing I want to show you is... Where have I put them now? Oh, these things here. See these special washers? Instead of using those flimsy tin things that come with the kit, you know when you're putting a, sh a set of shocks on, if your axle's a little bit worn at the bottom, the hole, well, let me show you. It's quite common on Land Rovers for this hole to wear because the bushes have gone and then the shock wears a hole and makes it elongated. Um, you can weld it up, but it's a bugger to file and, and get dressed right. So what I do is I get these, I'll put the, I'll put the part number here, and they're sitting nicely. Now these are off the old Defenders. So you put one at the top and one at the bottom. And you can see how they're rounded. They'll really help the bushes uh, move. Because if they're flat, mm, well it's not so good. Because that will get all the different angles, if you see what I mean. And if your hole is worn, just simply pop them in. And weld them in. Tack weld them in. You don't really have to weld all, you know, you can weld all the way around it if you want. But it's easier than welding up the hole. Because, like I say, you can you can grind it at the bottom, but because this has got a raised lip here, it's a bugger to get into, and it takes a long time. So I always fit those in replacement of the standard tin washers, and they work very, very well. Right, let's get back to work. Just before I fit the bottom uh, shock bushes, I wanted to tell, show you the difference and why I'm I'm not fitting poly bushes to this at all. I don't like poly bushes because that's what happens to them sometimes. This was uh, part of a Britpark kit to do these yellow shocks and it came with poly bushes and my friend, we fitted them to uh, my, my, shell, my friend's Michelle's Land Rover when I get it sputtered out. 500 kilometres, that's all that lasted. And this was the only one. The others were fine, but this one gave up and you can see sort of how it's uh, not worn out, it's just fallen to bits. Now I found out that these are made in Korea. These aren't the original poly bushes, these are Korean ones. I don't know. I've seen too many of them fall to bits for me to put on, so I put the old standard rubber ones on. Now, I want to show you something else. These are Bearmark ones, these are rubber, 
And these are the ones I fell up, found on the shelf, and I cannot compress those. Those are rock hard. <laughs> you know, that was a good experiment, wasn't it? The, the problem is, you want some movement in your shock bushes. You, you know, you need a little bit. And when I was trying to describe, because when they're, when they're on the pin, they're, they're sort of constantly moving and rolling around. And if you put something in that's too hard, well, something's got to give. And maybe it's those little tin washers that give up and then these are starting to rub on the axle. Who knows, I've seen all sorts. So I always put the soft bushes in and they're quite easy to replace. But why that yellow one went, I don't know, because it was tightened down properly, so there's no excuses there. It just fell to bits. Right, now we can get back to work. Some people ask me, how do you tighten up the bottom shocks? Well, I'm just about to fit these. Uh, I know they're old, and they're not really the right ones, because this truck's got extended springs on, and these shocks are too small, so they're going to be bottoming out. I'm going to have a hell of a job trying to put these on. Anyway, before I do... Rubber bush, one of those that I told you about, the other side that I told you about. And you can see there's a gap between there and that's where your axle fits. Now, pay attention. <laughs> see there's a little shoulder on there. Well, when you put your bottom washer on, I haven't put the rubber on yet so you can see. So when you put the bottom washer on, let's take this off. When you put your bottom washer on, it's going to bottom against that shoulder here. So when you put your nut on, you can't tighten it up any further. So in other words, you've really got to compress those rubber bushes. And that's why I'm saying we didn't use those hard poly bushes because they're just, they're going to stress all the threads and things like this. The rubber will have some giving it, if you see what I mean. And that's why we use rubber. So let me see if I can struggle on and get these shocks on because I'm going to have a hell of a carry on. I had to do another patch on here because it was a little bit soft underneath. Somebody had put body filler in it before. <clears throat> Not good. If I'd have known that, I would have done it before I welded it. Anyway, now I've got that done. Now I've safely pulled the wiring through, which is a good thing. And now I can join on my trailer wire. Now I put the trailer wire socket here and it's gone out quite nice. I used the original bracket, uh, just there look, and cut it down. And it comes pre-wired, but it, uh, it comes with this audible beeper. Well, that's not going to get put on because uh, I can't see the point of it and I don't think it's legal here. In fact, a lot of trailers don't even have lights on. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out the wires on here for the trailer and then solder them onto here, re-tape all this lot. As you can see, the, the wire has been damaged over the years, but we'll re-tape it and we'll take all this tape off here. So it, it really did do a nice job and it saved a long time because now I can kill two birds one stone, just take the wiring from there, join it onto there, pass it back through the, the hole in the chassis. I've noticed too that I think the grommet is too... <laughs> The hole in the chassis is too big for the wiring. Hmm. Let me Indeed. have a look at that. <laughs> the hole's different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, plastic sheathing around there when I do the, the wires. Like this stuff here. You see this stuff? I'm going to put some of that around that wire and tidy it up so it doesn't chatter around. So, let's get on with wiring. I don't know if there's really much to tell you. But if you just follow the regular cords... What have we got? Let's see if I can do this off the top of my head. Uh, green and purple brake lights, I think. Now there's a left night light and a right night light, a parking light, should I say. Uh, a red with an orange and there should be a red with a black. Is that it? Yes. Yep, that's the one. Next one. Green and a black. I think that's a fuel tank. Green and black's fuel tank. There's a twisted pair there. These must be the speakers. Uh, we're looking for green and red is the left. And where's green and the white? There you are. Green and the white is right. That's how you remember. Green and the white is the right. And that's on minis, triumphs, all sorts of British cars. So you can't really go wrong, really, can you? 
All we've got to do now is work out the colour code of the um, position of the wires on that pre-wired plug and we should be home and dry. So let's get on with that. I've just started to do the soldering on, these, uh, on this wiring but I just wanted to show you something else, another use for these little things. And these are uh, clamps for suspended sealing when the um, contractors are putting suspended sealing up. You know the ones with the ceiling tiles in? Well when they do the rails they put these little clamps on to keep it all in place while they drill it. But there's some great uses for them in the shop. For example, join two together like this. If you're doing any soldering you can put your wires in, clamp them down, hey presto, a clamp. And you freeze a hand off and they're light and most importantly they're cheap. So I've got one set up here um, let me see if we can see it. I'll just show you as an example. We've done soldering before. If anybody wants to know any more, I'll, I'll let you know. Where is it now? It's here, isn't it? There we go. So what I've done is, I've set two up. One clamped onto the, uh, onto the chassis, and one clamp in the wire. So, when I want to solder this, I've got one arm free, so I can solder and I've got one arm free. Now I have tinned all the wires and tinning is uh, just applying a little bit of solder to the end of the wires. So all you have to do is hold it up, touch them together with a solder iron, job done. And then put your heat shrink over the top and you'll make a really nice job. But honestly, these little things here, are worth the weight in gold. because you, for, Especially for wiring because they don't damage the wire because they've got rubber tips on. Excellent tool. Right, back in a bit. With the wires all soldered up now, and I put heat shrink on. Now the heat shrink I use, whoops, it is. I get all my heat shrink and tie it together into a big lump so I'm not just working out. This is um, this has got glue in it in this one. So when you when you warm it up, um, the glue melts and makes a nice waterproof seal. And also, I know it's probably use a hot air gun. Not a, night, uh, not a lighter or something like that. It makes a nicer job. Now, another top tip. When you're putting the heat shrink on I and, and soldering wires, I always do one at a time. And the reason why, you know, like it's so much easier to think, oh, I'll just put heat shrink all over this lot and do it all at once. Well, the problem is, if some of the heat shrink slips down the line and you don't see it, well, it's stuck down there and then you have to redo your joint again. You know, because once that, once that glue's... Uh, sort of dried, we ain't going to move it. So, that's what we do. Now another thing is, I've soldered in the uh, trailer lights here into the original harness because it comes with a set of uh, scotch locks. What do we do with scotch locks? We throw them away. They're absolutely diabolical, horrible. Take the time, do the job right, and then you don't have to do it two or three times when they get water and corrosion into them. So, the next thing, I've got to find out where the other end of this trailer wire, because we've got trailer brakes, electric trailer brakes in North America. So this is the trailer brake wire, and uh, when we pull the chassis off, well, we cut through the wire. Because <laughs> we couldn't see where it was. So that's not a big problem, I've just got to join that back up. And then, what's the next job? Oh, I'm going to put some uh, tubing round here and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished and pushed back in. So there we go, that's all nicely taped up now. I'm going to push that into the chassis. It's all well protected. Now, so that's going to look nice. I'm going to tie wrap it down. Just got a little tie wrap here. But what I want to show you is, you go, oh Mike, look at all that wire you've got dangling down there. There is a reason for that. This, this is the new wire for the towing hitch. Uh, for the towing electrics, for the UK towing electrics. And the reason for that is that if you ever get a problem with your plug or anything like this, if you've got some slack on your cable, well, you don't have to rejoin it down here, you can just cut a piece off the cable. So what I do is I, I tie it up like this and put a tie wrap around here and keep it all nicely out of the way. And then that if you get a problem with that in the future, I don't think that's what that uh, thing's for, but it's, 
it's damned handy. And then we can clip, clip that up. Now all we've got to do is put that blue wire on and that's tidied that up. We'll put another tie wrap around this one here because this is the wire that goes to the body electrics. It's really, really sort of shonky. Oh no, no, that's a trailer wire. That's the other U US socket. So I'm going to tie that up as well with another tie wrap. And I think I'll put some of this uh, sheathing round here just to protect it. After that, the job's done. So you try and make it neat, but always remember that little trick. Don't cut wires too short. Especially on trailers, because if you damage your plug and then you can't put a bit more on, or you can't pull it out and lengthen the cable, then you're sort of either rewiring re or you're soldering bits on or using them scotch locks, which I detest. Right, so I hope you like that. That's This is getting this done, so it wasn't... It wasn't as bad as I thought, and there isn't a grommet to go in here, apparently. There is at the front, though. Um, so we'll get that sorted out, and then the wiring's done. The next job, I think I have to put a step, an extra step, on the step. All will become clear.